Good morning again. Uh, normally Kevin would be standing up here addressing you at this time, but instead today you get myself and then Scott Griffin uh, will follow. I don't think Kevin's job is going to be in jeopardy, uh, but I'll let you decide that. I'm going to give you my condensed version of my faith journey, uh, so 10 minutes or less of my faith journey. Karen and I were married in Trinity in 1993, so we've been involved in Trinity since that time. Uh, Karen grew up in the UCC church, and so this was where she wanted to be, and so that's where we've been. Uh, she actually grew up in Bullsburg, Pennsylvania, uh, a little suburb of State College, the home of Penn State. <laughs> but my journey actually began in Wilmington, Delaware. That's where I was born and raised until I came to Ohio to go to college. My parents had uh, Midwest roots. My mom was born in Hammond, Indiana. My dad in Winona, Minnesota. Uh, my grandparents, my mom's parents actually were both from Cleveland and her father uh, graduated from Case Institute back in I don't know, 1915 or something. My dad went to the University of Minnesota, then he got his PhD at Ohio State, and then got a job with the DuPont Company in Wilmington, Delaware, and that's where they met up, because my mom's, uh, my grandfather also worked for DuPont, and so my mom lived with her parents at that time. So that's where they met. Uh, I found this little book, it was actually my brother's, but it's called Grandma's Memories, and it's, uh, it starts out with the growing up time, the dating time, the marriage, and it kind of takes you through my, my mother's life, and it has little pre-printed questions, uh, you know, did you have any brothers and sisters, who were you named after, and it just kind of goes through life. But on page 19, there's a question, well, the, the title is, When Grandma and Grandpa Were Dating. And it says, Grandma, did your, a par did your parents approve him, of him right away? And if so, why? And, and she, her answer was, no, wrong religion. <laughs> and that tells quite a story, because my dad was a very strong Catholic. My mother was raised by a stubborn old German Lutheran. <coughs> and, uh, when my parents got married in 1943, my grandparents refused to come to the wedding because she was marrying a Catholic. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, to me that doesn't seem like a big deal now, but it was a real big deal back then. And we really had no contact with them until after I was born, I think. And then uh, things began to thaw a little bit. But I, I'm not sure my grandparents But my growing up in the Catholic Church was, we went to church every Sunday, and in order to receive communion, which the Catholics have every Sunday, uh, you had to go to confession on Saturday. And my father, we never missed church, and we never missed confession. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has ever been in a confessional and gone through that experience, but... You're in there with the priest on the other side of this partition, and bless me, Father, for I, for I've been, for I have sinned. It's been so long since my last confession. Of course, I never really told any of my good sins. <laughs> it was made, I think once the priest said, boy, you tease your brother and sister a lot. <laughs> because that was my main go-to sin every week. <laughs> but I grew up in that environment where went to church. I didn't go to Sunday school much because I was always in Catholic schools, and we got our religion there. And it was a religion which I remember was something you didn't question. If you did question something, you were kind of looked down on. And by the time I got to college, I had enough of the Catholic church. And fortunately, uh, I went to college about 400 miles away from Wilmington, Delaware, in Marietta, Ohio, uh, and so my father couldn't check up on 
me to see if I was going to church every Sunday. And pretty much uh, that was the end of regular church attendance, except when I was home for on vacation. Uh, so, but it, by the time I got to college, I was kind of turned off by organized religion and kind of turned off by my dad. Uh, but of course, there comes a time in most a child's life when they, they suddenly, they finally realize their parents really didn't know something. Uh, and I found in this little grandma memory book, uh, there was a question about my mother was asked, who are the people who most influenced you and why? And her answer was, my parents, because of their Christian faith and their high moral principles. And it took me a long time, but I think I would have, I'd answer the same uh, if I was doing a grandpa's memory book. Uh, that's what I think I got from my parents, exactly the same thing my mother did. It just took a heck of a long time to realize it. The other thing she said here is, there was a question about, what person do you admire and respect, or do you most admire and respect, and why? And there's actually a picture of Abraham Lincoln there, but my mother's answer was, my life is centered on Christ, and I take my problems to him. So anyway, we fast forward, I have kids, I'm in Worcester, Ohio, and uh, the one thing that I, I, know, I thought I started my clock, but I didn't, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me to sit down when you've heard enough. <laughs> so I have children, and now, I'm, and what is the first thing we do is find a church to go to. Yeah? So my parents did have that effect. It wasn't the Catholic Church, I can assure you of that. But uh, by that time, my father had kind of uh, mellowed a little bit, and he was happy with any Christian church. My mother was always happy with any Christian church. She had actually converted kind of half-heartedly to please my dad when they got married, but the only thing she ever said was, don't be a Unitarian. <laughs> 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 Other than that, it was wide, it was wide open. <laughs> so, when I think about my faith journey and where I'm at today, uh, having had that uh, upbringing, some, at some point in Trinity, I'm not a real Bible expert, but I was, uh, it was probably Kevin that talked about Micah 6, 8, which is a famous... Bible verse, which talks about what does God want from us, and it's to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly, and if somebody says, well, what's your faith, what do you believe, and that, that kind of says it all for me, uh, and I really, looking back, I think my parents, even though they had a different outlook and were very much more centered on, you know, you got to be in church, that's very important every Sunday. Uh, I think they lived their life according to that, uh, those Bible verses. And I think it's essential, particularly with children, as you're raising children, to expose them to church and to have them belong to a, a church because I think the church community is what really uh, helps you strengthen your faith and, and through worship, through sermons, through mission, uh, Sunday school, fellowship. It's that community that Kevin talks about all the time uh, that helps you live up to God's expectations. Uh, I don't think I've gotten to the point where I have the confidence in my faith that my mother did, but I'm working on it, and I think church helps. Uh, I don't see my kids in church today, so you can see I'm not as dictatorial as my father was about <laughs> being in church every Sunday. But uh, I think it's something, you know, most teenagers the one thing I love about Trinity is the mission trips that the youth go on, and I think that's something that will uh, carry through in their lives and be important to them and help them join the church when that time comes. So that's a quick, condensed version. Uh, I did forget to tell the story about my father who 
insist on going to church every Sunday. We had the worst snowstorm in the history of Wilmington, I think, and he told me, I said, we're not going to church today, are we? He says, get out there and put the chains on the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is when we had chains. Uh, so I did, and we got to church. The parking lot was empty, and the priest came out and said, Amel, which is my dad's name, are you crazy? <laughs> So, I'm going to turn it over to Scott Griffin with that little... Hi, uh, I'm Scott Griffin, and uh, I've been going to this church for a few years. Uh, my mom brought me here when I was younger. I think I was baptized here, right? <laughs> so... Um, Mark talked about a couple of things. Uh, one of them was uh, giving credit. Uh, so I would just like to give my mother some credit because um, I'm a believer uh, and I didn't used to be, but she influenced me a lot. And so I appreciate it. Um, so I, I, today uh, I'm gonna play a song, um, but I'm just gonna talk a little bit first. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, Suzanne uh, asked me to do a talk for Men's Sunday um, and asked if I'd be willing to play a song and talk about what God has done in my life. So today uh, I'm going to play a song called <coughs> Small Steps. It's one of my newer songs. Um, I've been a songwriter for uh, probably 20 years five years, um, and in the last 10 to 15 years, I've done a lot of um, uh, songwriting for audiences um, at venues uh, that are not at church. Um, so I'm going to also talk about a little bit of my faith journey, um, kind of like Mark just did. All right, so... Here's how it goes. Um, I, uh, I went to college uh, at Ohio Northern, and I was in uh, mechanical engineering, and I liked the saxophone. And then I met some guys, and we formed a band. Um, but let me go back a few years. When I was eight, I uh, would sit out there in those same seats and use the back of the uh, sign-in pad to play like tic-tac-toe and dots was another game that my sisters and my brother would always play. And I, there was so much you know, intelligence and things coming out of this area, but I didn't really notice it then because I don't think I had the appreciation or had reached the stage of formal operations where I could start really internalizing some of that message. Um, I would listen to, like, well, I would hear, I wouldn't really listen to the boring sermons uh, and watch people around me either really into it or being lulled to sleep by the words. Uh, but some people were electrified by that spirit message, uh, spiritually and intellectually. Uh, but God and all the music was going on too. And during that time, even though I didn't really care at eight years old, um, God was instilling music in me uh, with quiet leadership. So then when I was in junior high, I did confirmation classes of Jim Christensen uh, in the parlor where pretty much faith in God meant faith in myself and my own ego. Uh, but God's will for me to write music continued uh, without my knowledge um, and without taking credit, without me really even believing. So then I was 17 and I remember having a very strong non-belief in God. Um, I exuded as much apathy for my creator